Hi, Tea Timers. So today, to celebrate the start of December, I decided to do a splurge. My kids, like one of them, likes the um, Marchese Christmas tea. So I saw the tin of it. Here, I'll show you. Normally, I don't show the tins, but it's very Christmassy. Ooh. <laughs> and it has rich black tea, orange peel, cinnamon, cloves, and vanilla. And I put a little bit of um, cream into it and a tiny bit of honey. Now, <laughs> it might seem like I'm quite excited. <clears throat> I am. <laughs> Let me take a sip of my tea first. Ritual, ritual. Come on now, Meg. Because, oh my goodness, what's that mysterious shirt hanging over something? <laughs> okay, well, that's part two. Part one is I got this um, from my editor. I got yesterday my edits, my line edits, because remember I did the big edits where we did the, the big things and they wrote this. I'll, I'll only read you part of it because it's probably boring for you, but Dawn's already had to listen to me read it three times. <laughs> so I'll read you the salient part. We're so happy with your revisions for the book. Thank you for your careful attention to detail. <laughs> um, you smoothed out the little places where we had questions about a plot turn or a motivation and the story really sings. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So you work for like a year on a book and then you get like things like this and it just, it just makes you really happy and because it doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> okay. So really sings. Readers are going to love all capitalized. Mick and Sarah's romance. There's such a powerful combination of fast moving suspense and emotional character arcs. And the ending scenes offer such satisfying resolution for each of these characters we've grown attached to over the course of the book. <laughs> okay, so like, yeah, I've been reading that a lot since yesterday, but it's just like, um, it's just kind of buoying me through the day. I just feel like, you know, something happens, it's like, Oh my goodness. I don't know. I just have this like hopeful feeling about this book. Like, I don't know. And so anyway, so I got that yesterday. So I started working on the line edits and, and then I was, um, I was reading through stuff. And first I was doing the things that, um, that they had written that, uh, Carrie and Cindy had written things about, but then, um, then I thought, Oh wait, I better go back and also look over the chunks that I wrote new from the last time in case there's something that I have to just tweak a little bit because this is my last chance before we have proofreading edits and then copy edits. So I was reading over <laughs> and um, I was reading this one section that um, Carrie had said, but why does he do that? And so I had written this section and I know it's gonna seem silly to some of you, but to, to those of you that are writers, you'll understand like, I was reading the section, I was like, oh, I forgot that I wrote this because it's a, a, a new bit. And I was reading it and I was, and I got all involved in it. And then I finished that section and my eyes had welled up. Like, like I hadn't even written it, like somebody else had written it. And then I got shivers like, oh my gosh, I think this, this one's like really, really good. So, so anyway, it's funny how you just get into like, I was like, oh, poor Mick. Oh man, that's like, you know, and then, so anyway, so then you might be saying, okay, so what's part two of the big um, thing? Because it's just, but so then today, this morning, I woke up. I'm taking a dramatic pause with my, with my tea. Um, I woke up and um, a little bit into the day there, I got another email from Carrie and she said, it's okay to share the cover with you guys. So <laughs> drum roll. This is my shirt. <laughs> there it is. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, you can't see it really up close big, but it's it's really, it just makes me so excited. I love, love, love this cover. I love how she's like a silhouette, but through her silhouette, you can see the city below and all the lights sparkling. And um, she's up above on, on a bluff. And when I when they sent me this thing, remember I told you I was really excited, but I couldn't share it with you yet. I was flung back to when I was seven and we were traveling. My, our parents had pulled us out of school in the spring and, and summer, and we were traveling all around um, America and Canada, painting post offices. And um, 
uh, the kids were, we were camping, like we were just camping out by the sides, you know, by the side of the road, we'd find a place that had a creek. Cause in those days there weren't a lot of fences and things. And we just had everything thrown in the back. It was kind of a caravan of, um, of cars. And our stepdad had taken out the seats in the Volkswagen van and put a big mattress there so that when us kids were traveling and my mom had her banjo and her guitar and, and, um, you know, we'd play games in the car or, you know, she'd strum and we'd sing to probably stop us all from squabbling. <laughs> and there were several cars. So sometimes you're in a different car and he had several people who helped work as well. And we painted, we had a contract to paint all these post offices and they had a problem when they were painting to get, um, the radiators, because in those days people heated, a lot of the older buildings had radiators heating, to get a paintbrush in between the radiators because it wouldn't fit and they couldn't get, they were painting everything this kind of like pale green, it wasn't a very pretty color, uh, um, color, and they couldn't figure out how to, and I figured out how. I was like, I, I could do it because my hands were really little because I was seven. So I just plunged my hands in the buckets of paint. I can't even imagine how much lead I've absorbed through my skin. And then I go like this in the radiator saying, get them in all the nooks and crannies. So then after that, I got to be part of the painting group instead of staying back at camp with all the kids. And that was really exciting because then I got to have good eats because the people, the grownups who are painting, they'd get like, I don't know, like a bologna sandwich and a cookie and, and, and a cup of juice or something like that. And maybe, you know, it was like good. So, um, so I was really proud, like, yeah, I'm going to work. And I did all the, the, um, radiators. This is radiators. It looks like I'm milking a cow actually, but I did all the radiators and I was really proud. I was a working girl and, oh, but that's not the whole thing. So I remember once we were driving cause we'd have to drive long periods of time to get from one post office to the next. And it was nighttime and, um, a couple of us had fallen asleep on the mattress in the back of the van and um, our stepdad had pulled over and he woke us up and he goes, come on, get out of the car, get out of the car. And so we all got out of the car and sleepy eyed and it was dark and cold because you know the temperature drops in the summer. And um, we looked down, we were up on a bluff, just like this bluff on this book where she's up on this bluff. And um, except for they have her, they also have her like moving like she's running because the runaway heiress, but we were up on a bluff and this, when I saw this book, it reminded me of it because down below, we were in the canyon part, but down below there were all these sparkly lights of Los Angeles and it looked like fairyland and we're like, oh, fairyland. And our stepdad said, he said, look down there. And we, we looked and we, we were kind of, and then he said, that's where the evil people live. And we looked at him and I remember little Becky started crying because she was scared because she didn't want to be near the evil people. And um, it was it was kind of a mood dampener, of course, because <laughs> we were sleepy. And we got back in the car. <laughs> That's Becky. And um, we snuggled together for comfort and we're very glad when we sped away from LA where all the evil people <laughs> lived. <laughs> One of the evilest people was right in that car with us. But, um, but, uh, but I remember that. And, and there was something about this book cover that made me like get those shivers like, oh, it just reminded me of that past and now, and it just seemed right. So I was really excited. So ta-da, there, there is my cover. I wish I could, you could see it really, really up close, but um, I'm sure they'll be starting to put it up. So you'll be able to see it better, but I really love it. So thank you to the Berkeley uh, Penguin Random House design team for creating such a gorgeous cover. And um, what a difference my life has taken because I lived in LA and I'm not an evil person. <laughs> and my sister lives there and my daughter lives there and they're wonderful people. So um, I don't know, it's just funny the things that sometimes trigger a memory like you walk into a room and you smell a smell and all of a sudden, you know, you're back to sitting on the staircase listening to the grown-ups argue downstairs or or all of a sudden you're a teenager again, you know, walking along the beach and the crunch of the pebbles under your feet and so um 
So what, what blessings, huh? The, the, the things that you don't expect that then all of a sudden, foomp, drop a memory into your heart. So um, what I did with this, last time you noticed I had lots of little um, markers of the ones I hadn't done yet. But then when I picked it up and over the weekend, whenever I saw it, it seemed like accu accusations. It was like, look at all those <laughs> questions you haven't answered. Oh my goodness. And I started feeling overwhelmed. So I just put them all down here. But what I'm going to continue to do is probably move forward with the new ones because there's so many questions come in, which is wonderful. And thank you, Tea Timers. Um, but every once in a while, I'll go back and, and snag an old one too, just because I'll try to follow them up. But on a day where I have to chat about about my new cover and tell you about the wonderful thing that my editor wrote to me, um, I, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just so happy. So let's see. Um, uh, 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 um, okay. Oh, uh, 11 San Rose. I just ordered a copy of Singing Songs. Looking forward to it. Is there a place online that would have copies of your books signed? Um, a local bookseller you frequent, perhaps? Take care. And then Sarah Adams wrote, it's so brilliant and so is Gemma. So thank you both. I'm really glad. Um, I'm really grateful. Thank you. Um, so the thing is, I, I think I could set it up. I'm going to try. So thanks for the recommendation. I'm going to try. So what I'll try to do maybe is if I can find a bookseller. There's a bunch of them in the States, but maybe I'll see if I can find one where I can send them some um signed book plates so then they can put them in the books that you guys um want or and also there's i'll get one in canada and one in the u.s so i'll try to get on that and let you guys know um like next time or the time or i don't know i might forget look at all these but but i'll try to i'll try to remember but definitely you can set it up lots of times i'll do bookstore readings or signings but it's hard because of the pandemic so we're all staying in but um, once this is over, then I'll probably be traveling around and then I'll be visiting different bookstores and, and I'll sign a product for them and then they, they can send it to you. So, um, but I'll set, I'll set up something. Oh, speaking of, hey, okay, so you know how I've talked about uh, Jane Ann Krentz. Well, she and Christina Dodd, who helped me t title The Runaway Heiress, they both are having those kinds of events. They're having at, what was it? I wrote it down. Okay. They're having one at the Poison Pen, which is a really, really great bookstore in Arizona, but they will send around the world. So um, they do a lot of crime fiction and suspense, but they also do like us, like romantic suspense. So, you, you know, you, you should go there and look at their website because they're always getting people to sign. And um, Christina Dodd and Jane and Krentz are doing a virtual signing with them, I think, uh, this week sometime and they're sending them a bunch of books and then they're going to sign them remotely doing a live FaceTime and then they'll send them back and they can personalize them to and everything. And they're also having one at, um, pages to books, which I think is in Seattle and all of these places will sign and then send. They have books coming out in, I think one Christina's dot Christina dots one, uh, the wrong alibi. I think that is, a first week in January or last week in December. And same, Jane Ann Krentz's new book, um, All the Colors of the Night, which is um, which I've read the other ones of that series. That's also either end of December, beginning of January. But if you order it now, or if you have somebody who's a fan of their work, you can get it personalized to them and sent to them for Christmas. So um, that's it. That's, that's um, wonderful. I I, it's funny because I'm looking, I'm looking at the, you, you guys, the tea timers, but in it, I see, oh, glowing back. Um, there's a little bit of a shine on here, so you can't quite get the full, like, oof of it, but it's really, really, really beautiful. All the little details and everything, it's, it's a really exciting. So, um, anyway, lots, lots of love to all of you, and, um, I'll see you, uh, the day after tomorrow. Bye-bye.